a good mate of mine, Joel, you might have seen him in some of my other videos, he uh, sent me a link to an add on Gumtree for a new car. And before I knew it, this happened. And before I knew it, I was in a 2012 Mazda BT50. So, after having the old Mazda Bravo since 2011, so seven years, that car has done so well. I'm gonna miss it, I'm just trying to sell it off now. So yeah, I got a lot of work to do on this car. And fortunately, it's got a really good base to start on. It's got a ARB steel bull bar. It's got a factory Mazda snorkel on it, which is handy. And it's also got a sick canopy body on it. So I'm stoked that at least it's got some stuff on it. Worst thing is I gotta start from scratch with a new setup, which is uh, why I'm thinking of making a YouTube series called Project Cyan. Action! Yo! So what happened? Well, nothing happened, life happened, and uh, yeah, I had four months until I went on a trip, which happens to be this trip right here. We're just up in the Kimberley at the moment, on the beautiful El Questro station. I'll just put in a little panning shot here so you can see the uh, view that I'm seeing right now. So yeah, I kind of, start, I started recording some of the episodes, like I started recording the, um, the battery tray and some of the LED 12 volt stuff, but then I just kind of... I just really had to smash it out to get the car ready for this trip. However, I want to show you guys part of the car. I'll show you guys some other bits of the car too, but for now, I just want to show you guys the kitchen. Maybe it'll give you some ideas on how you can do your kitchen. So I'm pretty, I'm really excited about how this all came out. And so far I've been on the road for two and a half weeks and it's all worked pretty well. Welcome to the kitchen. So, I've kind of wanted to keep this area free here just so that you've got space to cook and so on. So the first thing I want to show you guys, so I got a stainless steel tabletop made up. A little bit fancy I know, but I'll show you guys how it works. So it's really neat with where it stores, it just stores on top of my whole kitchen set up here. And you can actually just pull it down there. It's a little bit of a tight fit, but it's just such a neat spot to have it. So I'll just show you guys how this works. Once you rip it down from where, it's, where it stays, I found these uh, stainless steel quick release hinges on Amazon in America. So all you got to do is just click them in, pull it up, and for the legs, I actually just got two adjustable tent poles and I just welded up this little frame here. Which is really handy because you know, whenever you're out in the bush, you never have level ground. So you just adjust it to where you want it, lock it off, and there you go. You got a nice table to work off, which is fairly sturdy. Can you see that in the camera? It's, it's sturdy, right? Yeah, it's sturdy. Yeah, yeah, it's sturdy. And the best thing about the stainless steel tabletop is that you can put anything on it. You can put a boiling hot camp oven on it, boiling hot kettle, it's not gonna melt through, which is pretty sweet. Now, another thing I've done. <laughs> came up with this idea, it's just a bit of round bar and I just drilled a couple of holes in it, in the table. You flick that in there, get your wash up bowl, shove it in there and you got everything including the kitchen sink. So it's pretty neat because as you're cooking you just chuck in all your dirty utensils and other stuff straight in there and it's kind of out of the way, keeps the kitchen area clean. Alright so I may as well start at the bottom and work my way up. So down the bottom here is the gas cooker. So what you do is you just slide that sideways and pull it right out, so that way you don't need any straps or anything to hold it in. This non-slip mat just works really well to keep it on the stainless steel table. And you got your gas cooker. Now as far as the gas bottle, I could only find two options of mounting my gas bottle. One was on the roof, which would just really be annoying, and the second one was under there. Now you, you may be wondering about the legalities of that, well, I contacted the Department of Mines and Safety and they said they got no legislation about it. So as long as it's secure, it's fine. So uh, that was enough for me. So it's really neat though, because you hook up your gas and it's straight under there, which is really awesome. Also over here, I've got a Siggy and two USBs. And also I've got my 240 volt power, which is handy if you're using say a vacuum sealer or if you're just charging camera gear and batteries. And that's all part of the 12 volt system, which I might show you guys in another video. So this is the pots and pans drawer. 
Got a couple of collapsible bowls in there, camp ovens in there, cast iron fry pans in there. Got plates and bowls and cups and cutting boards and all sorts of stuff in there. Of course that's going to happen when I'm going, isn't it? It's so, really easy to use, right? Is it? Yeah, yeah, it's really great. Like, so the idea is, because it's a little bit up, I think it's 120 mil up, you can actually have stuff here, but still open your pots and pans drawer and get to stuff while you're cooking. Next up, the utensils drawer, which also works very well, doesn't it? Yeah, Yeah. Uh, especially when you're four-wheel driving. Yeah, that's... Everything, everything doesn't slide right. up to the front. I'm still fine-tuning it, but everything has a tendency to move forward when you go four-wheel driving. It's quite unfortunate, but yeah, so in here you've got all your utensils, got my cutlery just over here, and it's just... I don't know, I've just found it a really great place to keep it. It's just worked really well. A little bit of fine tuning, but for the most part it's worked really well. Now, don't be alarmed at how messy this is. We've been on the road for a couple of weeks. <laughs> but this is the pantry. So uh, the idea was this drops down and this is actually an extra storage area. So as you're cooking, you can have different bits of bobs here. And uh, yeah, another cool thing about it is because the door is not too wide, you can actually still get to your cutlery. Say you're cooking, you need another spatula. Still grab out another spatula. It's just really handy for that kind of thing. And yeah, just another storage area so that you've got more places. Just makes it easier to cook with. Um, another thing that I should talk about is the insulation. So around the canopy, I've actually got air cell insulation, I think they call it commonly. It's what you use to insulate under it goes in between the tin on your house and the inside what's that called you're just insulation under your tin pretty much but anyway i bought a roll of that of gum tree for a couple of hundred bucks and i insulated the whole canopy with two layers on it and it has worked brilliantly like we've been averaging probably the low 30s when i've been up here in the kimberley and over in the nt and it's just been fantastic it's actually kept everything in the pantry really cool and another thing that's happened by accident, completely by accident, is when you got the heat coming down on top of the canopy, the insulation stopping most of it, then because the table's here, that's taking off a lot more heat. And by the time it gets to here, it's virtually not getting in there. Like everything in here has been relatively cool. And just to prove my point, see these M&Ms? What would happen normally if you kept chocolate in your pantry in there? A little bit soft. Do you want? Sure. Thanks, mate. No worries. So yeah, it's actually worked really well, the insulation on the canopy, like as far as keeping everything in here cool. Obviously, you've got the fridge in here, which is making a bit of heat, but it's worked pretty well. So let's show you the fridge. The fridge is nothing special, really, but anyway. It's a, it's a fridge slide. I bought it. It's nothing special, really, but it's made it so much easier as far as keeping the fridge nice and organized because it's really easy to get to. Like it's, you can organize it all, you can stack it all. And it's just made life really easy. Got the old angle in it. It's been going really well on this trip. We've also got another one in the back on this trip that's gone as like a freezer. So we've had ice cream and all sorts of goodies in there. And uh, that's been keeping up as well. So great fridges, but anyway, fridge sliders made life very easy. Nothing special really, a fridge slide's a fridge slide, right? But another cool thing about the fridge slide is it's given me this little area. So when you pull it out, you've actually got more room to store a few things. So yeah, like once you pull the fridge out, you've got this area here, so you can kind of keep a few bits and bobs while you're cooking in there. And just again, gives you more room because, you know, what kitchen doesn't need more bent space, right? And also it's just worked out really well with keeping a little step there. And also I've got a few, um, just a fold up solar panel in there. Also, while we're in this section, I'll just show you guys this little area up here. So, I had this dead space up here. So, I decided to mount a fire extinguisher there on this cupboard. And in this cupboard over here, I've just got my air hose for my air compressor. I've got a 12 volt shower in there. All my 12 volt extension cords and a few other bits and bobs, first aid kit. It's just kind of an area that to store random things that you don't really use all the time, but still want to be able to get to fairly easy. So. That's also worked really well. And the other cool thing is you can actually still open the fridge while it's in the canopy, which is a pretty handy feature as well. I'd love to show you guys all about the 12 volt stuff, but I'll do that in another video. 
So another little storage area that I have is just over here and the reason for that was I still wanted to be able to open this cupboard here but I wanted to be able to store a 20 litre jerry can here. So to get to it you actually got to remove the jerry can but in there I keep stuff that I don't need to get to too often so just got virtually tea towels and a bucket, some extra washing cloths and some detergent. But yeah that's another cool little nook and cranny where you can keep a few things that otherwise you don't really know where to keep. So it's all about clever storage in uh, kitchens right? So here I've just came up with a little idea just to hold the uh, paper towel holder. It's just a little bit of elastic and a couple of hooks. This makes it nice and easy to uh, get your paper towel. Alright cameraman, what's your favourite feature about the kitchen? The food that's in it. Okay, besides that. Besides that, uh... What are you talking about? The soap holder? Oh, oh right, yeah, the soap holder. You just love that, don't you? Well, I don't, I don't wash my hands with soap, but <laughs> it's always good when the cook does. So <laughs> I see. <laughs> right. Yep. Yeah. There you go. The soap holder, mate. And and, and I love the tap. The tap's the tap. a good food. Hey, we haven't talked about the tap. I haven't talked about the tap. All right. Now, water in the outback means life, pretty much. So I actually decided to somehow spend more than I should have and get a custom made stainless steel tank and Brown's radiators made that for me and I gotta say it is just the bomb like got a water pump to pump it out beautiful clean water exactly what you need in the outback and how much water do you carry too much nah the tank holds 55 liters which is a pretty comfortable amount anymore it'll probably be a little bit heavy so it's worked out pretty sweet and last three days last three days and the location is nice and close to the kitchen too so you wash your hands or get water as you need it so easy to fill up easy to fill up plug it straight in here fills up the same way so so this is the water tank so yeah 55 litre water tank and uh, just a bypass here so when you're filling it you just turn the bypass on so you can fill it straight up from where it comes out of the tap on the back and uh, to try and make the pump a bit more waterproof because it's very exposed to the elements I've kind of just siliconed up the whole motor and all the electrical connections so so far it's lasted the dust we'll see how it goes in the future i've also plumbed in a breather which some of my friends might think is overkill just like misha back here yeah <laughs> don't laugh at me and that's where the breather comes out for the tank and also here i just got the boys at brown's radiators to weld in two um bungs there and i've just got a bit of clear pipe so i can actually just monitor the level just by looking at this bit of clear pipe here to get a rough idea of where the tank's at of course the downside of this kind of system is you have to be parked level to see what the actual level is but for the most part it gives you a rough idea. So that's pretty much my kitchen. I hope it gave you guys some ideas of what you can do with your kitchen. It's always good to see what other people do because that's where sometimes you get the best ideas from. So thanks for watching guys. I better get cooking because the cameraman back here is a bit hungry doing some spaghetti bolognese for dinner. So yeah, see you guys in the next video and uh, thanks for watching. And like and subscribe if you want, if you think it's worth it. I don't know. You're not gonna, you're gonna, not gonna send credit where it's due, you know, for all the great ideas. All right, yeah. And Misha came up with the whole kitchen design. So everything, everything. It's every, all my. So it's all the cameraman's <laughs> idea back here, Misha. You know, he's a legend. You know, I've been, this... I've been traveling with him for two and a half weeks, and I'm just absolutely. Uh, he's a great guy. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. I'm the ideas man. The, he's ideas, the ideas man. Ideas man. Yeah, no. Alright, so, I better get cooking before right. you die of hunger. Well, hurry up. <laughs>